We'll go ahead and get started. First question, Sean Cunningham. Thanks. Hey, Corey, how are you doing, man? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Um, just for you, how are you feeling physically and uh, mentally kind of coming out of this uh, weirdness and into a kind of even weirder training camp right now? Uh, mentally and physically, I feel great. Uh, I'm in a great place. Uh, I think everybody's itching to get back. Uh, you know, we had a little bit of basketball there in the bubble, uh, but we're all ready to, you know, get it going again. Cool. And then uh, obviously there's been a lot of, you know, additions, subtractions, uh, but one of them notably in the backcourt, uh, losing bogey and adding a piece like Tyrese Halliburton. Just uh, your thoughts on, on losing a teammate like uh, like bogey, but then also what you see in uh, in Tyrese. Yeah. Uh, first, you know, losing bogey obviously was 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 big. Everybody knows how talented and what type of a player and how much he meant to us and the organization and not only that how much he meant to the city of Sacramento he's done a great thing in, in touching a lot of uh, uh people uh here uh so you know it was a huge loss for us but then we got a uh, Tyrese coming in young full of energy uh you know they call him little magic uh so I'm excited to play with him we're all excited for him to be here uh, you know, we've seen uh, seen just a little bit of him working on one on one stuff, uh, you know, very fast, you know, very quick. Uh, so we're all excited for him to get on the court and, and play. Jason Jones. Hey, Corey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Doing I all right, man. I like the, yeah, I like the shirt. The cool shirt. Ah, yeah, I'm in the car. Yeah. yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, just. Uh, Luke mentioned to us about defensively, maybe some things changing philosophy-wise, maybe how you do some switches. What do you, uh, what can you gain from that early on, and how do you think that'll help you guys in the uh, going forward? Uh, I think that'll help us, you know, uh, just switching up our coverages. Uh, depend obviously depending on who we're playing and whatnot and personnel, but I think it'll help us with our communication, get on the same page quicker, because you know when you when you change up your coverages on defense a lot. You, you know, you have to be, you know, in, in sync. You know what I mean? You have to be together. You have to, you know, work on your communication. So I think that helped us in that aspect for sure. And last year, there was a lot on you defensively. Just, I mean, one night it might be Luca, Another night it might be James Harden. You were on LeBron. Just physically, what did that do to you over the course of the year? Just the kind of that the, those nightly battles against guys like that. Uh, it's, I mean, it's of course challenging, but that's what I'm, you know, that's what I do. You know what I mean? That's, that's my job. I go out there and I take on that challenge every night. And that's what I bring to the table, play a hundred percent, 110 percent and try to make it tough on them. So, I mean, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't expect anything less, uh, from, you know, me or, or, or my position. James Ham. How's it going, Corey? Good. Yeah, how are you? Good, man. A, I like when, that library you got there, man. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, when you look at this season, you got three young players coming in that uh, it's a good chance <clears throat> that they're all three going to actually play minutes. Um, just how much is it as a veteran on this team sort of part of your job now to take these guys under your wing and, and show them the ropes? It's definitely a responsibility of mine. Uh, to take them under my wing and show them the ropes. Uh, you know, I remember when I came in as a rookie, it was a lockout year. I only, it was similar. I only had a week to prepare. Uh, so things start moving fast. Uh, so, you know, you got to be comfortable to ask a lot of questions. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, and I already, uh, you know, reach out to them and tell them if they if they need anything, I'm, I'm right here. Just talk to me, uh, whatever you want. If you want to know personnel and different players, whoever you're going to play against. Just let me know. So I'm here to help for sure. Now you talk about that uh, coming in out of a lockout year. I mean, this is very similar <clears throat> to that first year. How do you how do you bond in that short amount of time when you know again you guys have so many new players and everything else, but especially with those young guys, how do you bring them in to the family and really get them acclimated? Uh, I think you just you know stuff like outside of basketball, just reaching out to them. Uh, uh, actually, you know, Tyrese moved into my community. I reached out to him yesterday and just told him anytime he wants to, you know, come over, come by, talk, whatever, chop it up. And that goes for any of the young guys we can. 
Uh, I think we do stuff like that outside of the, you know, the court. And then on the court, obviously, it's gonna, his game and, and, the, and those guys are going to speak for itself, but we got to get them caught up in terms of our terminology, uh, our, our schemes, and how we do things, you know, on a professional le level in the NBA. G-Man? Corey, um, a veteran player, yeah. nine full seasons now in this league, you've experienced an awful lot. Uh, does the comfort level change now in your second year in Sacramento, considering particularly you've got new coaches in the mix and a lot of new faces that will be your teammates? Uh, yeah, I get a little bit more com uh, comfort here in, in Sacramento. Uh, like you said, I've been doing this for a little, a little bit. Uh, so, you know, basketball wise is always going to kind of be the same, obviously different players coming in and out. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, reconnect on that level again, you know, on the court, uh, which will, which will come during the season, uh, with chemistry. Uh, but I'm a little bit more accustomed to the city now, which is, you know, great. I walk around, I see people that I've seen before last year. So that, that, that's where the, you know, I get more comfortable. So I'm starting to, you know. Well, not starting to, but I'm having a great time here, and you know I got to keep it going. Good to see that smile, even under the mask. Appreciate you. <laughs> yes, sir. Matt George. Hey, Corey. Sorry, no, uh, no video feed on this end, but I'm doing you a favor. Trust me. <laughs> it's all good, brother. <laughs> uh, Monty McNair, when he was talking to us about the signing of Hassan Whiteside, he talked about Whiteside's interior presence, his shot blocking ability, and how that opens up uh, for more aggressiveness on perimeter defense. Can you explain from your perspective how that works and how much of an asset it is to have a, a player like Whiteside behind you? It's a huge asset to have a player like him, uh, especially with his shot blocking ability, like you said. Uh, for a guy like me, that's going to be guarding a lot of the uh, other teams, you know, most talented players, uh, you know, it gives me opportunity to be more aggressive, like you said, to, you know, kind of not, I mean, obviously I'm not a gambler too much on defense. I want to keep between him and the bucket, but just take that extra little, you know, poke at the ball, whatnot. And if you're annoying that if he does get by me, I have a great presence at the rim to change his, his uh, shot or block his shot even. So it definitely gives you confidence as a defender out on the perimeter to, to push up. And we just spoke with Robert Woodard and, and he feels one of the areas that he can make an immediate impact as a rookie is defensively. And he seems to have the right defensive mindset, understanding how much effort it takes. And he wants to make that impact for the team with the NBA being such an offensive league or offense is more highlighted than defenses, how much of, of an advantage does Woodard have coming in with that mindset? How ahead of the game is he? Uh, I think he's ahead of the game. And uh, if, if, he, if anybody's seen him play in his body, he has an NBA body already, man. That guy's jacked. Uh, so, I mean, he could definitely do it with his effort. Uh, he, he's an incredible hard worker. Uh, so we're expecting big things from him. Uh, and hopefully, you know, on the, he does, you know, a great job for us. And on the defensive end, you know, he definitely has that body where he could, you know, make stops. So we're expecting it. Tony Harvey. Yeah, say, uh, Corey, and you are a defensive uh, specialist. We have seen that. You have won a, a few games, you know, on your defensive efforts alone. But on the offensive end, uh, the talk past few days, at least with um, – Coach Walden and um, Monty, that, you know, they want to do uh, five up, five out, more people handling the ball, you know, coming up to court. Uh, and of course, you know, over your uh, nine-year career, you've seen a lot of offensive strategies. What is your thoughts about, you know, having a versatile roster and uh, uh, multiple ball handlers? Uh, I think it's good. I think that's just the, you know, the way the league is now, you know, we want to play extremely fast and we have the ability to do so uh, with, you know, multiple ball handlers, uh, you know, a young core group of guys. Uh, we're going to be pushing the ball very, very fast. We're going to be getting out in the open court. Uh, you know, we're going to be, you know, obviously we got to rebound and do the details, you know, good. But, you know, we're trying to get out and do it with multiple ball handlers. I think we could do that easy. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll send out information on availabilities for tomorrow. From this? I think it's just being close. All right, guys. Take it easy. That's all you guys got for me, huh? <laughs>